So I've been uh, cutting up some of these steel tubes or rectangular tubes into uh, angle irons. So I'll be making a cut here and a cut here. Uh, and those tubes were gonna be used for uh, for the frame of the new steering house that I'll be working on this week. Uh, as you can see, there's now a small frame welded on top of the roof. I'm just getting closer to show you. So these used to be uh, rectangular beams, and I've cut them in uh, in angles, and I welded it on. Uh, and the idea is that I will make a frame out of these angle irons that goes all the way around and then sandwich some uh, some rubber in between and then I will be able to bolt on the the new wheelhouse uh, and also take it off if necessary and it might sound a bit overly complicated but that would mean if I make this top frame now that I actually could take the frame inside of the workshop and build the steering house in there because pretty sure that's gonna be something for the winter it's gonna be rather windy and cold almost too annoying to do anything outside so I will have a steering house that will get bolted on and I've just welded the last seam it doesn't look very pretty but it's because uh, I have to support the weight of the of the cable while I'm welding or of the welding gun so it's not ideal and this seam the back seam this side and this side and the ones on the back were rather annoying to fit because they have a big curve in them uh, but they fit nicely so now this is welded on and then i can start cutting out these two uh, stringers and this one behind there as well because the roof of the steering house like half of it's gonna get slightly recessed like 20 centimeters lower so i'm gonna cut that out weld on some uh, some arms that go down some steel strips and then i will be able to weld on new floor beams onto that one so that's the plan for today but hopefully, like I have to swap my welding gas today. Hopefully those guys will show up soon. So, to get going. So the overall dimensions of the steering house is uh, 2 meter 30 by 150. Uh, and I'm gonna build another 90 centimeters on top of the existing one. So then I end up with around 110 centimeter height in total. And this style of frame I will rebuild above that hole back there, which we have the skylight. But it will be a, a meter wide instead of one and a half. So the remaining tube that I have laying on the K, I will cut in half as well, just like I did with those. And weld on top of there. So I just got a nice new bottle of welding gas that I hooked up. So instead of making these hooks on the inside I talked about, I'm gonna first do some seams on the outside while the wind is still gone. I think it looks quite okay. I mean, it's also welded from the inside, so it will be pretty strong. So I just finished this seam and I thought I would share a little bit on my welding procedure. And the way I do it is that I mark every 15 centimeters um, and I weld that seam and then I skip one. And for the material that I'm using right now it seems like it's not causing too much welding distortion. Uh, I'm running at quite high amperage but it doesn't seem to be a big deal. So I'm just gonna let this cool down and then uh, continue filling in the rest of the gaps. In the front I had to do two passes because uh, there was a big gap, uh, like five millimeters, but I also filled it in from the back. So I just grind it smooth and nobody will notice. Yeah. So I just finished welding all the way around and the inside as well. So that's nice and stiff. It came to look out pretty decent. I mean, I'm welding it with a welding machine that's uh, five years older than I am on a moving boat in the wind. So I think it's, it's good enough for me. It's, I think uh, the level of quality I'm going for, it, it should be 
like a work boat. It's not gonna be a yacht at all. It should look sturdy and not uh, not too perfect. Uh, so yeah, that's all it on. And what I've been making now, or at least what I plan to install, is, uh, is these pieces here. And they are gonna be installed like that on the inside of the frame. And I will be able to cut out the existing beam and later on put a new floor beam below so it will actually drop to the floor about 20 centimeters which will give a bit more sitting space in the steering house and again under here that's gonna be stay open so you'll be standing on the platform below to steer it and from here on backwards it's uh, it's gonna be slightly lower and it's just more an area to sit or sleep uh, it will not have standing height but still a nice space so I will install these things and they should uh, stiffen the, the roof plates to the side of the frame and and I can finally cut out the remaining frame that's left on the inside so that's my plan to do now uh, the wind is picking up a little bit but I'm gonna be welding on the inside seams away from the wind so I think it should be okay uh, yeah. So this one is also welded in place. <sighs> the whole point of having those ones is that they, they support the, the strings of the roof. So there's one going up here and goes up to the top of the frame. Because otherwise uh, this, this top frame 
that the steering is going to be on is only welded to the top of the, the roof to these plates and not to the stringers. So now it's all connected and nice and stiff before these will. So right now I will uh, cut out the last frame and install two more posts and then it should be really nice and stiff. You can also see with the piece I cut out how I actually made the whole frame for the boat. But, uh, I started with angle iron, cut it every 20 centimeters uh, and cut it in. And then I had a mold with the right curvature, clamped this profile on with glue clamps and then welded in all the gaps. Maybe it's easy to see on this one. So it has been cut and welded over all the perimeter. I tried to bend it, uh, I tried to bend it hydraulically, so uh, having an hydraulic jack in the middle with a small frame to, to press it in, in three points. But the problem, because it's only angle iron and not a T-profile, uh, an angle iron has a tendency to, uh, to fall over. So then I ended up welding uh, both two of them back to back, so you basically create the T-profile to bend it that way but then you're pressing almost 60 by 12 millimeter uh, with, a, with a hydraulic jack and that was just uh, it wasn't really working that well so then I ended up cutting all of them and welding them. I think uh, next up is that I will uh, fill in some of the plates over here and then start making up a similar frame like that but then for the skylight and I think that one for the skylight will be like a meter wide, but this is one and a half and probably the same length as this one. But that one will be of course over here. So yeah. So that's this video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will think I will do a little bit more work this weekend and then upload another video next week. Thanks for watching.